going on, family? It's your boy, Double the King, Double Edge Reg, DJ Double, whatever you want to call it. But today, I got my lovely queen, Derese, in the house, and she came up with a topic named Relation Tips, which is the bomb, because I was thinking relationship tips, and she said relation tips. <laughs> so let, we going to break this one down real quick. And we was talking about marriage and uh, unity, like how you work a marriage out or how marriages break down and all that. So we had three quick topics. I believe the first one was God. Is God in it? Did Number God one. bring it together? Because none of this stuff works if that's not the case. And let me say this. You may not believe in God. You may not follow a Christian walk, but whatever walk you walk in, if your partner isn't on the same page as you, forget it. Your partner could be uh, not under belief of God and you are. That's going to be some, some problems. Your partner could be a believer and you aren't. That's going to be some problems. So is God in it? And number two is... I have to say it like this. What you see is what you get. And it goes back to what Pastor Tony preached on um, about God. What, Pastor Tony Williams. Pastor Mary Tony, shout the out. Christian Center, he Santa get all the credits California. for this. <laughs> uh, when Pastor Tony preached on what you see is what you get. And it's how we see God is what we get out of God. So if I don't see God as mighty and able to take care of my needs, then... I, I'm limiting God. Yeah, so so it's cap like, on what he can do. So it's the same sense of how I see my husband. If I don't see my husband as the man, the head of the house, then I, I'm i going to end up getting a man that's not the head of the house. Right. In my mind, it's, he's not enough. So, so the if, part I'm tripping on with that is I noticed this in a lot of relationships too, and even in us. But thankfully, God being the center of what we're doing it makes sense. People that don't have God in their life, this will be hard to do because you're going to also put that pressure on that person because if you don't think they about nothing, if you think this much of them, they ain't no good. They, you know, all the negative thoughts you got on that person, that's how you're going to see them. So now that's all they are. They are no good, low down, can't do this, can't do that. You ain't a man. You ain't a woman. That part. Which sees what you get. So, so if you definitely, don't act like you, you don't, yeah. got it going on, then, I mean, if I see you as, a, you know, you just, you taking care of the house. I appreciate everything you do is awesome. And but I what if I ain't you. doing that is what I'm saying. What if I'm not, back in the beginning when uh, I couldn't find work and I was struggling just to get income because I didn't have unemployment. But I was struggling to do DJ and, and dance and do what my gifts are to make some money. But I wasn't, you was carrying the load. First of all, I knew that God put us together. So I got to go back to God, first of all. I know that you're not a lazy man. I didn't marry a lazy man. You was working already. So there too. See the difference. You know that. Mm -hmm. And that's the part I'm trying to get to. It's like. I'm being moved on this topic because I see it in a lot of people we know, relationships we've seen come and go, people that were together before you and I ever ran into each other and how their relationships fell apart. And it, you could almost tell when a person felt disconnected from the relationship. Like, they're in it, but they want to be gone because this woman ain't no good or this man ain't no good. So they already had that set in their mind. Mm -hmm. Plus, they didn't have God in their life. So God wasn't guiding them to, to make a discernment call and to understand. But then with all that, every time something came up, every argument or every debate, the answer was divorce. You know, and that brings me to something. And look, y'all, I, I didn't say this at the beginning, and maybe we'll get more in detail on our relationship. Um, the one thing about us, we've been through some things. Like we were together as boyfriend and girlfriend and broke up broke up over kind of like 
um, what would you call that? Like, I gotta call it what it what it was. What would you call that? Uh, a misunderstanding. It was a misunderstanding, but it was like trying to save face and not bring somebody down from where you you held a person at a certain morals, right? It's mm -hmm. a moral perspective. So we a was misunderstanding teenagers. of morals. We was <laughs> teenagers. That's a whole nother video. But anyway, we had that history. So when we came back together, we kind of already knew we got to work on some things to be able to make it work. But then what that came out to be was God being first in our lives. I thought God was the most important thing in my life. She thought God was the most important thing to her. So I wasn't looking at her to be my savior and everything be put on her. And she wasn't doing the same in my on me. So our expectations, which we're going to go to number three, is expectations. So again, expectations is like, for me, is what I'm expecting from my mate. I have to make sure I communicate that to them so they'll know that's what I'm expecting. Because you said something earlier. So about yeah, in, in relationships, period, when you expect something, I, if I'm expecting, in my mind, whatever 100% is, is not his 100%. Right, so he please. might give me, be giving me all he's got to give. He's giving me his 100%. But in my mind, it's not it's quite 100% to me. But he's giving me all he has. And so that's, that's, that's where, we, where the communication comes in. And, you know, I, I think that's a topic, too, as far as overall relationship. Communication is key, but we're talking about uh, unity and working together right now. So communication is a part of that. But when you come down to say, uh, um, you were talking about reading of the mind. So yeah. we were talking about communication. Expectations, mm -hmm. right? So you have to communicate what you expect. And a lot of people, if the relationship <laughs> ain't, if it ain't valuable to you, you're not going to have that conversation. But guess what? you still expecting something. So if you're in a relationship, if you talking about getting in a relationship, I think you should talk about expectations. And if you do that up front, it makes it easier to deal with. When you see that there's a... So I know my limitations. I knew a lot of my limitations because I had went through so much when we was not together from our high school days for 27 years, we were apart and in other relationships, and I knew what my weakness was. So when we came together and started communicating, it made me be able to tell her, look, this is where I'm at with this. This is why I'm not doing this. I'm hoping to do this. Like I had expectations of myself, which gave her a perspective on, okay, that's, that's where he's at. You know, it just makes it easier to deal with that. So... Is God in it? Number uh, one. <laughs> um, what you see is what you get. And uh, expectations. expectations. And then I'm going to go out on this. It wasn't one of the three topics, but it, made, it came to mind every time, right? Um, selfless versus selfish. So all of those things, in, in perspective of what you're looking for in it, are you being selfish about it or are you being selfless about it? And that's on both ends. I can't be selfish while she's being selfless. That means I'm taking. I'm not giving back and vice versa. She can't be selfish while I'm being selfless. So to keep it together, to me, that's the one area that God helped us achieve because we got out the way and let God direct everything, like asking God for discernment on how we should be as a couple like going to uh couples therapy and all of that and and looking at you in a looking looking at god through you or looking at uh you with god in mind like let god do this for her god help her with this god help us versus you know everything i want <laughs> you know god let me have this and let god's will be done and God help me to see what it is that you want and us to be. 
and you talked about couples therapy. We went through, not therapy, we went through counseling before right. we got married. We went through four right. weeks of counseling. Pastor couples P, shout out. Counseling. Couples counseling. Premarital counseling. There it is, there it is. So, and that was... A, Pastor Pinkston, Steve Pinkston, yeah, once Pastor again. Yeah, Pastor Thank San Jose, you. California, Maranatha Christian Center. Y'all know we love y'all. Yeah, and uh, for sure. But the uh, the thing about the couples premarital counseling, um, it really put us through the test too. So you have to ask yourself a lot of these questions. First of all, just because he saved and loved the Lord, and I wanted to marry someone, I didn't actually. That's a whole nother story. I won't talk right. about. I wanted to marry nobody. I wanted to marry Jesus, and he knew this would be. The closest thing, you know, to no, it anyway. <laughs> um, that's another story. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that when we went through this couples counseling and we went through the books and we separately had to answer these questions on our future. So the things that we wanted in our and future. Aspect, expectations and aspects. Yeah, our life goals and, and our dreams right. and what we've been through in our childhood. It dug deep because you got to go to the past too because the past can come up in our future. So th those were good things. And so I advise anyone who's about to get married and you think this is your love of your life, you call it what it is. Don't think that you, oh, well, we can always get a divorce if it don't work out. No, have that be not an option. So work it out now before you even get to that point. Go through premarital counseling. It really works. It really brings up some things that you, you need to bring up before you get married. Mm -hmm. And I know Pastor P thought we cheated because... <laughs> Because our answers were on one accord. Like everything we, our dreams were the same. Our goals were the same. Not exactly, but if we were in headed in the right direction. direction. Right. So that was just God. And we just kind of laughed like that's funny that he would think. <laughs> he didn't really think that. But he did ask the question, did y'all cheat? Because um, you look at each other's answers and, you know, make them the same. But no, we didn't. When we tried to make this a real short video. I'm going to oh. try to keep them under 15 minutes. Because basically these are just thoughts we going through that we believe could help somebody else. And if you like what we're talking about, please like and subscribe. Also make a comment. It's questions and topics that people might want us to talk about. Um, we're no professionals other than we lived it. We've been ten married 10 years yesterday. I New, still Year's, love New Year's Day is our uh, anniversary. But also we got the 27 years of experience outside of each other that helped us understand how to be in a relationship once we did uh, get married. So follow me on uh, Instagram, the real DJ Double Edge. Uh, she's Darice Curry on on Instagram. Also um, Double the King on TikTok. We do some dances and stuff like that. I try to keep it live on TikTok. And then if y'all friends and family, y'all already know where we at on Facebook. But check us out on YouTube as well. This is the Double Edge Reg and uh, Darice, Queen Darice in the Cobblestone Carry <laughs> Studios <laughs> with Relation Tips. One love. <laughs>